All right, picking back up where we left off in the four natural regions of Texas. The coastal plains, the first region, we talked about the human characteristics of it, okay? Uh, it has extensive highway systems, okay? And it is the location of most major cities, which kind of goes hand in hand. Most of the major, most of the population in most of the major cities and most of the highway systems. Okay, the industries in the coastal plains, the main industries are timber, uh, agriculture, oil and gas, tech. The technology industry is big in Austin in uh, higher education as well. Most of your major, especially tier one colleges, are all going to be located in the coastal plains. Okay. Uh, it's a few photos of uh, if you ever go down to Padre Island, uh, the national seashore, just some things that you'll see. You can kind of see. Just the, the shore of the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, you'll see some marshy uh, lands and whatnot in the coastal plains. You'll also find the Big Thicket National Preserve. Okay, it's essentially like a national forest. It's a uh, it, Big Thicket begins about about an hour, hour and a half south of uh, Jacksonville. Okay, it's a pretty neat little place if you've ever been through there. Um, Question, the coastal plains region is best characterized by which of the following, okay? Is the coastal plains region, is it dry or does it have high rainfall? And if you chose high rainfall, then you are a winner, okay? Now the north central plains, or you could say the central plains, the second region. All right, the physical characteristics of the North Central Plains are rolling prairies and very few rivers, okay? The climate, you have a very hot, short summer, uh, cool to cold winters. That's, that's kind of changed uh, lately. Uh, you, the summers do last a lot longer than they used to up on the Central Plains, but the winters do get cold. If you've ever been in Dallas in the wintertime, or just north of Dallas, it gets bitter cold. Um, the drought throughout the year, there's not near as much rainfall in the north central plains as there is down in the coastal plains closer to the Gulf. Uh, you have high winds and tornadoes. Okay, Tornadoes are bad in the central plains. A uh, major natural landmark is the Llano Estacado. Human characteristics, human geography, all right? The businesses of the North Central Plains are agriculture and manufacturing. Uh, military defense, there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, defense contractors in the North Central Plains around, uh, around Fort Worth and Dallas in that area. Uh, aviation, airlines, DFW Airport, uh, Southwest Airlines is based out of Dallas, Texas. And there's a picture of the Llano Estacado. It's beautiful down there if you've ever, if you've ever been to see it. All right, the North Central Plains region is best characterized by timbers, oak trees, and brush, and is known for what? Is it known for jagged terrain or rolling hills and prairies? The answer is B, rolling hills and prairies. Okay, the third region of Texas, the Great Plains. Okay, the physical characteristics are canyons, escarpments, aquifers. That's a big one to remember. Uh, plateaus. The climate, you have hot, short summers, but very cold winters. And droughts occur throughout the year, and the winter usually has snow and blizzards. The major natural landmark in the Great Plains is the Paladera Canyon, uh, just, I believe, north of Amarillo. The human geography of the Great Plains. Irrigation is a big thing, okay? The industries are ranching and agriculture and wind farms, okay? I have a grandmother that lived out in West Texas, and that's uh, pretty much what they did. They were... They were cotton farmers, and they could not have done that without irrigation. 
there are large uh, windmills and wind farms generating electricity in West Texas, taking advantage of the open space and the high winds. And also solar farms are popping up out there as well. And here's a photo of the Paladera Canyon. So the Great Plains region is known for its dry climate and rolling prairies or high flat land, otherwise known as plateaus. The answer was plateaus, high flat land. The fourth region, mountains and basins. The physical characteristics, all right, hot days, cold nights, hot short summers and cold winters because essentially you're getting close to pretty much being in the desert. Uh, there is drought throughout the year. It does not rain much in that region at all. Okay, you get snow in the mountains. It can be snowy up in the mountains and still uh, brutally hot down in the valley. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of rivers that flow through there and there's deserts. The major natural landmark is Big Bend National Park. Another major landmark in the mountains and basins is Guadalupe Mountain. That is the highest point in Texas. And if you ever get a chance to hike it, there's a trail that you can take all the way to the top. It's like eight mile, eight miles long, eight mile trail. It'll take you two and a half hours, three hours maybe. And it is beautiful once you get up to the top. The human geography, human characteristics of the mountains and basins region, okay? Cattle, sheep, and goat ranching is big out, out in that region. Uh, the Big Bend National Park, that is, a, that is a big draw, a big tourist draw, because it's beautiful country down there. Uh, here's a picture from Big Bend National Park. What region is this formation in? Of course, the mountains and basins region. So, the mountains and basins region is best known for High elevation and jagged terrain, or fertile farmland, or flat and open prairies. You are correct if you said high elevation and jagged terrain. Which region in Texas contains the most economic resources? Is it the Great Plains or the Coastal Plains? The answer is coastal plains. Which region in Texas stretches furthest to the north? Is it the Great Plains or the North Central Plains? The answer is the Great Plains. Which statement best describes a major difference between the North Central Plains and the mountains and basins region? What is the major difference between the North Central Plains and the mountains and basins region? Is it that rainfall is more abundant in the mountains and basins? Does it rain more in El Paso than it does uh, in Fort Worth, Texas? Is a desert climate found in the mountains and basins region? The answer is B. Which region in Texas contains the most urban areas? Urban areas. Urban means cities, correct? So which region contains the most cities? Great Plains, Coastal Plains, Central Plains, or Mountains and Basins? The answer is the Coastal Plains. All right, uh, we'll just have, I'm gonna have a little graphic come up here, uh, with Texas cities. It kind of shows you an idea of just how Texas has grown. Uh, there's just a list of, of the, uh, major cities in Texas in the 19th century or the 1800s, okay? Most of the population lived in one of these particular towns, San Antonio, El Paso, Goliad, Austin, Galveston, Houston, Brownsville, Victoria. Now, in the uh, 1900s and the 21st century, in the 2000s, some of these, some of these cities are still exist, right? San Antonio, El Paso, Austin is still there. Houston has grown tremendously. Galveston is still around, but it's not a major city anymore. 
there are a number of cities that have grown in size and surpassed it and become larger than it. Okay? Um, I think we'll just stop here. Uh, but there is a few questions. I mean, have you noticed more traffic in Jacksonville? Or if you travel through Tyler, have you noticed the traffic has gotten thicker? And so how do you think Texas can fix the traffic problems? I mean, there's some solutions that you can see. Like, say, if you drive north to Tyler, you can see where on 69 they're creating overpasses, they're widening roads and whatnot. And these are examples of the change of humans changing the physical geography, but also in an to adapt to the changing human geography. Okay? And we'll stop there. Just answer answer the questions at the end of this at the end of this uh, video and that'll do it for us.